Hi everyone, um, it's been a fair old while since I last posted a video. Um, just really because I haven't found all that much, um, all that interesting um, to be showing you. Although that is going to change because I've got a few in the post um, that I am looking forward to showing you. Um, but I thought I'd better post another video um, just because they seem to uh, go down quite nicely um, and to remind you that I'm still here. Um, so I've been uh, meaning to show you, uh, go back over my collection um, because the collection videos that I posted um, way back in the olden days, my first couple of videos, um, I've never been all that happy with because they were slightly muddled um and i sort of think it'd be best now now that i probably don't really see myself collecting that many more in the way of beatles records um to <clears throat> actually get round to going through each individual album chronologically um and showing you them one by one so today i'm going to start with please please me um so all the way up until um sergeant pepper i've got mono and stereo first or early pressings to show you. Um, so I'm going to show you today two copies of Please Please Me. I'm going to show you my mono one and my stereo one. Um, and that's about it. Um, if you do enjoy this video, then um, please leave me a comment um, to let me know if you'd like to, me to do a uh, similar treatment with my uh, with the Beatles and A Hard Day's Night, etc, etc. So I'll just set up my camera. I've got a really rare one if you haven't seen it before coming up for you. So I'll just set up my camera and I'll show you the two records. So fittingly enough, it was um, inheriting this one that actually got me into collecting Beatles records. Um, the eagle eyed amongst you will notice um, that the photo credit is r right in the bottom right hand corner there which gives you a little bit of a clue that this is a really mega early um copy of course mono copy as you can see quite clearly there um so the sleeve is a little bit battered sadly um this was this had sort of came up come off um and i've glued it down because i thought any it won't take too much for that whole little section there to just rip off so i think i've done a pretty decent job of gluing that down um i've not got any particular eye on resale value anyway because i will never get rid of this one um so i just it was all about making it as tidy as i possibly can for myself um there is the back of the sleeve there's a little bit of writing on it as you can see um this comes originally from blackwood so it's always been in wales this one um it was quite damaged along here and along here, which are repairs that I've just made. I glued some um, card behind the damaged flip back there. So it's reasonably sturdy, as sturdy as it can be there. Um, you'll see that it's uh, an Ernest J. Day sleeve, as opposed to a Garrod and Lofthouse one. There's the spine. The spine's quite nice, actually. Um, so, OK, so that's the sleeve. It could be better, but it's intact and it's basically all right. So the important part, the exciting part, is, of course, the disc itself. So this one is quite a rare one. So matrix wise, it's XEX. 421-1N on side A. It's got an MT tax code. It's got a name written across there. You can see faintly in Biro. Um, but the most important thing is that it plays really nicely. It has seen a little bit of action. But it's been generally taken care of. And if you're wondering, the songwriting credits on uh, on the label are Dick James. Um, however, this is a really unusual one because the songwriting credits on side B are Northern songs, I believe. There you go. So for example, that. So it's got what I believe to be a first pressing label on side A and a second pressing label 
on side B. And I've only just noticed that there's a pressing ring around the label on side B that isn't present on side A. So it's, it's a really rare one, this. They, I don't actually know if I've ever known one of these come up for sale ever since I've been buying and selling and collecting. Um, so once again, you can see light evidence of use. I suppose if push came to shove, you would struggle to call that in, than, in better than very good condition. It's certainly not excellent, but it sounds lovely. That's one of my favourites. And I think it's also probably one of the rarer ones that I've got. And that one's not going anywhere. So like I say, brilliantly, that was really inheriting that sort of got me into collecting Beatles records. Um, and at some point along the line, I decided to try and get myself mono and stereo copies of all of the catalogue, which I've more or less done. So... With that said, here's my stereo copy. It's not as rare as the mono one. You'll notice that the photo credit is slightly over to the left, which tells you that it's not quite such an early one. Also, if it was if it was um, same era as this one, it would have a larger stereo caption, but it's only small then. Still quite a nice early one though. So that's the front of the sleeve and the sleeve is really lovely on this. Only very slightly discolored there, but it's a it's a really nice sleeve that one. This is a Garrod and Lofthouse one. Um so this one I believe to be from around 1969. And I think it's sixth or seventh or eighth pressing, depending on your semantics. I try not to get too bogged down in that. As you can see, that's in really lovely shape. So matrix number on side A is YEX 94-1, 95-1 on side B. And that's actually it's in pretty much mint condition, isn't it? Well, maybe not quite mint, but not far off. You can see some slight spindle marks there. So that's my stereo copy. It sounds great from start to finish. Um, just for the sake of, of this video, really, um, I played them both back to back um, before I showed them to you. And I'm not going to describe myself as too much of an audiophile and my equipment isn't all that great either um, but just to see what differences I could pick out um, I think by and large I prefer the mono one um, and I think I'll probably be saying that for the next at least the next couple of records um, simply because um, the ba you can hear the bass more the clarity of the bass lines are great um, and so that makes gives it a really nice warm uh, feel um, whereas with the stereo one I think the vocals are slightly um, slightly brighter um, which gives it its own charm um, but for me uh, not quite as good as the mono one um, in terms of enjoyability um, but I don't play either of them all that much um, mostly not because i'm all that precious about them which of course i am but not for that reason it's because um i buy and sell these things all the time um and whenever i buy them i listen to them uh, to check that they're okay because i wouldn't want to sell a crappy record um so to be completely honest with you um ironically enough the fact that i've got a great collection um as far as my actual listening experience goes, is almost here nor, neither here nor there because I'm listening to other copies all the time anyway. Um, so that's that. Um, I don't pretend to be a big expert, um, but I do love my collection and I love to show it to people. Um, and I'm guessing, uh, seeing as you're here, uh, you quite enjoy it as well. Uh, I would hope so anyway. Um, so if you do want to see me do a similar treatment on 
um, I've got three copies of the of with the Beatles, which is the next studio album. Um, then please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I really uh, enjoy that. I'm at nearly a hundred subscribers, so uh, it'd be really great to get to a hundred. Um, I'm hoping to put another couple of videos out this week. As I say, I've got a couple of um, records that I will probably sell, but they're coming to me in the post, um, including a really rare copy of Sgt. Peppers that certainly I've never seen before, so you might be interested to see that. Um, but for now, uh, I'm going to sign off, um, and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, until next time. Cheers, everybody. Goodbye.